Welcome, and thank you for tuning in. So, this is a follow-up video on the last video I posted, which was on the PZEM power monitoring devices. For those of you who aren't aware, the PZEM modules are power monitoring devices that you can use to um, monitor how much electricity you're using in your home or in other situations. Uh, following on from that last video I had, which is where I showed a, how you can hook up several of them at once using a, using a low-cost microcontroller, I've gotten a few questions and the purpose of this video is to maybe address some of those uh, questions and then also show um, some updates of the systems that you can use for this. So a large part of this is going to kind of assume that you've watched a lot of the other ones or you know sort of a bit about these PZEM modules. So if you haven't, it might be worth giving them a watch, otherwise um, let's get going. So the video is going to have four parts really. Uh, first is showing apologies the components used in the project. Uh, it's got, as I got quite a few questions on that, I'm going to then do a mock-up of the circuit, followed by ways in which you can implement this. The ways I've used this has been through Home Assistant, um, so I'm going to show you how I've used it there. And then, as nothing is perfect, I'm going to show you some improvements that could be made to this system. So, without further ado, the two main components. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the actual PZEM. Uh, dash 004T version 3. Bit of a mouthful. But what this is, is this is a power monitoring device that monitors both voltage and current in a system. One of the big advantages of using this type of system is that it takes a lot of the, it does the calculations for you. So you just have to hook it up and then it gives out the data um, in a very readable form and it means you don't have to implement complicated systems to try to figure out what's going on. Um, and how to measure it. The other big advantage this has is that it's fairly non-invasive. So on the left hand side here we have this black thing here which is an example of a transformer, transformer coil that you can use to measure current. Um, this device is able to read these split core transformers and convert that into a current reading that you can use. The advantage of this means you don't have to it's very simple to implement. You don't need to start wiring things in series and it gets quite complicated if you go down that route and it's also a bit more dangerous. So these boards are great and they can be very insightful. These boards communicate over serial to a device. Uh, the device I use in my situation are these little um, ESP8266s which are in the form of a D1 mini microcontroller. So it just means, the D1 mini just means it's the form factor, it's this kind of miniaturized um, microcontroller. So these are the two key components uh, to run the programs. Then the other uh, important components that I think a few people mightn't have used before is this little AC to DC converter. So this converts your mains input, your 230 volt input, uh, to 5 volt DC. There's a few different variants of this, but the one I used is the 5 volt DC. The reason I did that is because it could power uh, the microcontroller and also the PZEMs. And I'll show you how that was wired up next. Oh, apologies, yes, the other components I use, which might be a bit non standard, are these JST connectors. So, these are um, just uh, kind of circuit board uh, connectors you can uh, purchase off Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I would definitely recommend them. They're very useful. Uh, they have advantages over the other connectors as they kind of grip onto one another. Uh, so it means there's less likely for things to slip out. But uh, in case people are wondering what they're called, the JST connectors. And also, I'll put it back here hopefully, uh, you can see here that the PZEM actually uses this type of JST connector here, so it means it's highly compatible. So I would definitely recommend having a look at these if you're interested in making this. So how is it wired up? So very simple, it's a very simple diagram, very simple wiring diagram, but this covers pretty much everything. So first off we have our 230 volt um, input, our AC. That 
feeds into our AC to DC transformer. And then the way I have wired this is the 5 volt from that connects on the same uh, PCB or circuit board track, goes through the PZEMs, and then to the uh, D1 mini. Um, same with the ground. So the one device is so the one uh, the one transformer is powering all devices, and then the RX and TX are the serial communication uh, you require to get the information from the JST sorry from the PZEM modules. Those are connected to the next adjacent pins there, and that is very advantageous as it makes wiring very simple because you only you're only using four tracks to connect everything if that makes sense so this is just some pictures of the actual um, setup I have so here you can see this is your 230 uh, volt mains power coming in it comes into the 5 volt sorry into the transformer and comes out as 5 volts and ground so that 5 volts and ground powers this little um, ES, uh, ESP8266 while also powering all four of these boards. Uh, it's quite useful the way this is done as it's one as it's straight track so it saves you a lot of wiring and like I said before we use pins D3 and D4 of the ESP8266 which are the following the, the two pins right next to the ground and 5 volt. And so next up, I'm going to just do a quick, uh, I suppose, live run through. Okay, so I just want to show a quick up close of the circuit. Uh, this isn't the actual circuit, this is just a mock-up. Uh, I didn't want to take it off the wall, and I didn't solve any of this in. This is just kind of put in place to hopefully give people a bit of a close-up idea as to what's going on. Um, so starting from right, we have this here, which is a mains 230 volt um, to 5 volt DC power converter. These are fairly common, I think this is like 90 cent uh, off AliExpress, worth the buy, definitely worth stocking up a couple of these, they have 5 volt versions and 3.3 volt versions and 12, or whatever you want basically, and they're no more than a couple, uh, couple dollars. Um, one thing that's not in this, because uh, I couldn't find a second one, um, I salvaged an old uh, power plug from old, some old electronics, the kind of the two pin power plugs. I wonder if I have an example lying around here somewhere. Apologies for the shaky cam. Okay, so this isn't quite it. Um, it's like the connector that something like this would go into. The one I use actually only has the two plugs there because um, didn't ground this, which probably should, but anyway, uh, that's a talk for another day. But basically, this uh, the I got the uh, the connector for that off an old electronics and just kind of soldered that in to the top there. Right, so um, the circuit itself is extremely simple. So basically, you have your um, two thirty volts will come in here, five volts will come off the top two pins. As you can see, um, these tracks are all uh, connected together, so I should say as well, the, the board I use there is similar to this, the underside of it, where you see there's lines of copper traces. So basically it means all the pins going this way are connected, and all the, oh sorry, all the holes going this way are connected, and that way they're disconnected. Um, so basically, 5 volt goes along there, goes into the, see if I can get this out shadowing, goes into the 5 volt of this ESP8266, uh, the D1 mini, the 5 volt and the 0 volt, uh, 0 volt ground, all both come off that, and the PZEMs, which are all connected to these connectors, which I forget the name of, I think it's um, JC, I can't remember, uh, I'll, list out what those are later on anyway um that powers so all of this gets powered by that one power line there now i don't know if you remember in the previous video i said that there's different ways of using serial connections which is what these rely on that type of connection uh, the pzems so 
uh, you have what's called hardware and and kind of software connections. So in other words, there's pins here uh, which are designed with the ESP8266 to work specifically with uh, serial connections. Uh, you get kind of the fastest connections because everything is kind of built to purpose, if that makes sense. However, you can also mimic it using other pins, which is what I did in the case of the previous video. And the reason for that is, I don't know if you can see there, but pins D4 and D3 are right next to the ground and 5 volt pins there, which I used to power this. So it meant that I didn't have to solder any kind of odd connections left and right. I could just do a straight line across all of them and use 5 volt, 0 volt, D3, sorry, D4 and D3. And it would just mean that there's a nice straight line going all the way across there. And it just made soldering everything very easy. But that's it really, that's the majority of the circuit there. Um, okay, with that live demo done, just going to quickly run through some ideas for implementing this. Um, first thing I'm going to go through is creating dashboard objects, kind of the most uh, basic version, I guess. Next, I'll use uh, I think, a tool called Grafana. Uh, a bit more complicated, but you get some really interesting um, analysis from the, your readings. And lastly, I'm going to show you a new feature that uh, that Home Assistant recently added that ties in very well with these PZEMs. So the first is just creating these dashboard objects. So in other words, you create your dashboard and you simply detect the sensors that you've created using ESB Home. This is probably the setup I use the most. It's very useful. It gives you a quick 24-hour overview. Uh, you can create a basic graph showing, I think this shows the power over the day. And very useful, very uh, powerful. The only catch with this type of system is that I suppose you can only see 24 hours behind you if that's an issue, and that the you can't reset the energy counter. So the PZEM counts the kilowatt hours or the watt hours, I should say. Um, however, you can't uh, reset that. So no matter when you're, if, if you'd like to reset it every month, which is what most people probably want to do because that's what their energy bill will be based off of. You can't really do that currently with the ESP Home, um, but that's a shortcoming of ESP Home rather than uh, Home Assistant. Grafana is a graphing tool um, that comes with uh, ESP, uh, sorry, Home Assistant. You can install it. I won't go into how you install it because uh, there's a few steps involved in there, but it gives you great um, insights. You can graph it over months, weeks, days, hours, whichever suits you. And it's great for seeing trends. You can really see when your energy usage is high and not. Um, the only thing I would say if you're setting up, if you plan on setting up Grafana, you do have to set up a database, which if you're running a Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant, probably most people are, it's not difficult to do. There's and some, some great tutorials out there on how to do that, but uh, it's an ad added step for sure. But if you can do it, it gives you great insights. Lastly, I wanted to go over a new feature that Home Assistant added recently, um, the energy usage tab. So this is all pre-configured stuff. Uh, you add your devices to it, and it outputs a lot of um, interesting information that's very readable. Uh, it also adds a few extra features, such as based on your location and your usage, it can estimate how much fossil fuels you're using, how much non-fossil fuels. Uh, it's designed to work with um, solar panels, so if you were to introduce solar panels to your system, you have a very good, very deep insight as to how much power you're using and drawing from the grid, etc. Um, yes, yeah, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, it's free, comes with Home Assistant, and it's very powerful and integrated, and the PZEM devices are detected natively. So lastly, I just wanted to cite some improvements if uh, you wanted to redo this project, um, things you could work on. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to put safety at the top because this circuit does deal with live electricity, uh, live current. So there is always, you have to be a bit more cautious because of that. Uh, first thing I would do safety-wise, which I haven't implemented, um, would be to put covers around everything. I plan on putting covers around it, but I also plan on adding some more devices, so I'm going to be changing things quite a bit um, in the coming future. So when I set that up initially, the it was only meant to be a temporary thing, and the temporary thing has now turned into 
a semi-permanent situation, but um, would definitely recommend covering all the PZEM devices uh, and the 230 to 5 volt transformer modules. Uh, PZEM devices, when you buy them, you have the option of getting a cover with them. Would definitely recommend that, unless you plan on making some change yourself. Um, the second thing I, the second improvement that could be made is introducing some sort of reset energy counter. So earlier I mentioned that you can't reset the kilowatt hours, sorry, the watt hour uh, timer. So the PZEM has a very good feature in that even if the microcontroller is offline, but the PZEM isn't, it'll still count the watt hours, which is important because that's what your bill is based off of. And uh, in an ideal world, you'd be able to reset that anytime your bill comes through so you can have an idea of how much things are costing you. Unfortunately, with the Home Assistant integration, that feature doesn't exist yet. However, I did put in a feature request a while back that seems to have gotten a little bit of traction asking people to, uh, asking if it can be added in. And you can see here, this is the GitHub page where for the ESP Home. And there is a feature request that they're currently working on, which is fantastic news. Um, they actually, I think, accidentally uploaded to the main page a while back on the documentation, so I was playing around with it. Unfortunately, it's not ready and not out yet, but it looks really cool whenever they get to it, and also delighted because it's a large, I think, semi-free work that is doing this. Or So uh, great shout out to the guys. There are a few uh, threads and forums on there about how you can do it currently. Um, I tried a couple of them, didn't have any success, so personally I'm just waiting until the reset button is is integrated. So thank you very much for watching. That uh, really covers it. Uh, covers the everything I wanted to talk about. If any more questions, please let me know. And have a good one.